Hi, I'm Andy Schlesinger, president of Andrew Toyota Scion. It's been said that word of mouth is the best form of advertising. With that in mind, I invite you to listen to what our customers have to say. Whatever I needed, the service was done um, in great timing, and, and I was totally satisfied. A few years back, I had extensive damage to one of my vehicles, and fortunately, the body shop did such a nice job, you couldn't tell it from new. I was very pleased. Andrew Toyota Scion, 15th and Silver Spring, where customer service is not a department, but our passion. And now, back to Focus on Diversity with Troy Shaw. And welcome back to the program. Let's continue on with our diversity discussion. Key role, according to federal authorities, an informant who helped break an alleged plot to bomb a fuel pipeline feeding New York City's biggest airport was so convincing to the suspects that they actually thanked God that, they, that he had helped them. The, spe the suspects believed that the informant had been sent by Allah to be one of the people basically to pull off this bombing. Now, here we have here still, to this day, plots against America. Is it not, is it not now just a fact, Robert, that America currently is somewhat under siege by militant, uh, militant individual, um, uh, individual? America members? has been under siege since after World War II. Well, was President you know, Bush, it's just, wasn't it's, President it's, Bush, it's been a target. Wasn't President every, Bush good for starting Homeland Security then? Was it Bush good for Homeland Security? Bush was only good for being in office at the time to keep the country together from panicking. After that, he screwed it up. What he should have done, and this informant issue is a perfect tool to defeat terrorism, was use these kinds of tools rather than just go in to the shop and just destroy the China store like a bull And when he went after these terrorists. If he would have used informants in Afghanistan, informants around the Middle East who would have done this kind of work in order to catch Osama bin Laden, the person we should have caught, rather than being in Iraq where we shouldn't be at now, we probably would be more effective in destroying this Al-Qaeda network than we are today. Homeland Security has been funding a lot more of the FBI. One could say that because of those dollars, Sandy, the reason why we are able to foil a lot of more of these plots. What do you think? Well, I think the dollars help, and I think the most important thing is to get people on the ground that speak the languages and know the community and are involved with the community. But even more important than, than informants is making the people in the community feel like they're included in the larger American community, so they're rooting for the right side. I'm a passionate American. I want the, everybody that lives in the United States, and even whether they're in the barrio or wherever they are, to be passionate Americans. I want them to have a stake in the system. I'm also concerned, though, that some of the manpower that's going into terrorism has gone away from cr urban crime and other crimes, and that's also a form of terrorism that disrupts our society. I don't know if we want to coin that necessarily. I can understand from the point of terrorism from that particular standpoint, but terrorism has a, has a terminology, a connotation that speaks of more foreign-oriented aspects. We have JFK was about to be blown up. I stand back and I look at that and I'm still nervous. I, I'm, I'm scared because I, I travel quite a bit. And I look around and I, I watch people a lot more than I did in the past. Who gets on my planes? Who does not get on my planes? Uh, I look around at what's happening Are within this. Are you profiling, this. Chris? I don't profile. I watch. Okay. <laughs> I am a monitor of people. Go, go to Disneyland some man, watch people there. Uh, but I, I watch who is going to be doing what and what their interactions are outside terminals, uh, what is happening when I'm traveling. JFK scares me because that is a piece of the puzzle that if it wouldn't have been for that informant, which I'm so glad that the rap industry didn't get the don't snitch on us tape to those individuals, which is a nice thing. So when you look at people who are a part of that network, if they're praying Allah that one of our informants is there, I'm so glad that he is on our side. Well, actually, this leads to our next subject matter leads directly into what Sandy has spoken earlier about rising crime. New information in an FBI report shows that the nation's murder rate rose slightly last year, but the number of robberies skyrocketed by 6%. The statistics were part of an overall 1.3 percent rise in violence crime, violent crimes across the country in 2006, the second straight annual increase. This goes directly to what you were saying earlier, Sandy. Maybe some of some of the dollars that federally go, uh, that federally going to go to the FBI for terrorist oriented attacks aren't going into these urban communities to police them. Right, because policing has become much more complicated in urban communities. It isn't a matter of simply having the cop on the beat and having enough squad cars, you need people that get into the gangs, understand what the gangs are about, disrupt the gangs, and you need those people, and that costs dollars, and then needs a skill level. But even more than that, my concern is that we are, 
with this whole pro- the problem is we have a pot that's boiling. And it's our people that feel like they're not part of our society but want the goods and services that the society has. So we, the fire is still on the pot, so the police and the FBI, they're the people holding the lid down. And it's very important for them to hold the lid down because otherwise you can't have a society. It becomes, it becomes like a rock. You have a terrorist society. You don't know when you get up in the morning whether you'll be alive in the afternoon and whether you're going to be shot. Okay. Well, it, it also goes to, uh, and I agree with Sandy, but it also goes to the idea of uh, the last uh, 15, 20 years of this huge explosion of individuals being incarcerated for the very simplest kinds of, of drug offenses. And now what we're seeing, especially here in Milwaukee, we are anticipating thousands of these individuals coming back into our communities. And we don't even have the, the, the job training, the job services, the, the, the uh, programs to uh, provide them with skills to get into jobs. We don't even have hardly good jobs out there for these individuals to get into. And what's going to happen is we're going to see a lot of these folks coming back into our communities and what's going to happen as Sandy pointed out we're going to see this lid now starting to boil over. Real short time here Chris sure. can it end it up for us here? You know, I, I hope that the individuals that do come out of the prisons are, are being able to get educated and being able to help because we've got to start with our we got to start with our communities. It's worth the saying. crime rate is rising all across America so even here in Milwaukee maybe that two million dollars wasn't a bad investment. I don't know we're still waiting to see. And when we come back we'll have more. Focus on diversity stay with us. We'll be right back. He could be anywhere. He just happens to be here. 